Greetings, everybody. We want to welcome you to the Call to Be podcast. I'm Travis Guzzi. I'm a pastor as well as an ICF certified life and executive coach and a Gallup Strengths coach. And we want to welcome you to this special once a month segment that we're doing, Everyday Believers, where we have conversations with everyday believers doing extraordinary things in the kingdom. I want to welcome in studio uh, Trish Freshwater, who is joining us, uh, one of my co hosts. Good to have you here, Trish. Hello, great to be here. Yeah, and our other co-host, Kevin Scott, he's uh, off doing pastoral duties today, so he'll join us for a future podcast, but uh, it's good to be here. And we actually have a special guest that we want to introduce all of you to. He is a very dear friend of mine. He is uh, one of my spiritual mentors in life and has been for many years. We worked together up at uh, uh, Camp Perkins in the Sawtooth Mountains of Idaho, and so we just want to welcome everybody to Robert Moore. Um, And today we're going to be having a conversation about about the intersection of art and faith. And Rob, as you can tell from his uh, studio here uh, behind him, uh, he is a great artist. And so Rob, welcome to Everyday Believers and uh, great to have you here today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Hey, uh, uh, I know know by your artist name, you go Robert. Is it okay to be a little more informal and call you Rob here today? Yes. Of course. Okay. Uh, good. Well, that's how I know you, Rob. So, hey, Rob, um, I'm sure our viewing and listening audience would love to find out a little bit more about you, um, your faith background, and what led you to become an artist? Boy, I I grew up in southern Idaho. I spent a lot of uh, time. My father was a farmer and a coach and teacher and as a farmer, uh, he had me out on the tractor and out irrigating and um, running around with a shovel. And I loved being outdoors. I love I love the seed time and harvest and the personal responsibility um, that um, you have in agriculture. And so I wanted that type of life where I could uh, spend time in the out of doors and. Uh, but I didn't like sitting on a tractor. So, what? You didn't so like sitting thought, on a tractor? Okay. <laughs> Come on, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, uh, well, I don't I'm, I'm just wired to be productive, I guess. And, and back then, you know, the tractors didn't have hot tubs in them and, uh, <laughs> and, and video and, so it it was uh, it was a motivator for me to find another avenue, a a, uh, a profession where I could be outdoors, I could be up in the mountains and hunt, hunting or fishing and still be working. I thought, well, how could I do that? So I thought, well, if I was an artist, I could work uh, anywhere. So that's those were the seeds of. Uh, my passion for art and my father, when I went off to college at uh, Concordia in Portland, my father said, well, just pursue until you know what you want to do. Cause I didn't know at that point, I didn't, I didn't know. And he said, just pursue law and until you know what you want to do. So I went into pre-law for a couple of years um, and and knew that was not for me. So anyway, <laughs> I decided you had well, a very I'm clear gonna, call from God I'm not to be, be a lawyer, artist. right? Yes, yeah, I definitely that. So I, I just decided, well, I'm going to pursue being an artist. And fortunately, uh, I was didn't get married until I was 32. So I was able to spend those lean years. You hear about starving artists. The Lord always provided for me, but uh, there wasn't, uh, I wasn't starving. I'll put it that way, but I, I ate daily. So I, I'm, but I'm glad I did not have to take my wife and family through those lean times, but, but I was able to sew toward art and, uh, and that's pretty much the, the early story of my life and, and what, how I got into art. Yeah, that's great. Hey, Rob, by the way, um, you also, during those years, um, have served at a camp that I met you at. Actually, I was a camper when I first met you, 
you were a counselor there at Camp Perkins, and then we worked together on staff for three years. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your service with the camp and why that was important to you and, and how you live out your faith uh, through that. Well, I, I started out, I was in fifth grade the first time I went to camp, and I've been involved with camp uh, up till just, I think, two years ago. I, I still worked up at Camp Perkins, which is in central Idaho, uh, past Sun Valley, north of Sun Valley. And um, it, was, it was a very important part part of my life. Every summer I looked forward to uh, being at camp and then as a as a counselor uh, it, as you know it, it's um, it's taxing but it produces great uh, great results both in the counselor and through the counselor and that that was life to me. So I went back especially in the 80s year after year after year. In the nineties i I was there, and um that's where I met my wife rebecca yeah actually so if i, I if I recall my mem- if I recall my memory collect correctly, I think I was the excuse on your first date. Uh, I had gone out with some campers and mentioned I'd seen some <laughs> flying squirrels. Rob was like, I don't believe you and used it as an excuse to uh, have Rebecca come with us, and we all camped out together, so very sly. <laughs> Yeah, and I I remember our first uh, our first intimate time where we held hands the first time down around the campfire, and it was like four in the morning. And we heard you. Oh uh, I don't even know what you were doing, but you were digging in the costume box. I don't know if you're chasing chasing no, the skunk or no, what. No, no. What it was was anyway, I was so, going by the water fountain, and there was a giant skunk. We had a, a legend of Horace the skunk. And the, the size of a good sized dog. And I came around the corner after getting a drink, going back to my cabin. And here's Horace waddling towards me or some skunk that looked like him. I screamed. That's what you heard. <laughs> so anyway, I, I scared these right, guys. Those that are, those, <laughs> yeah. Those are special memories. But anyway, uh, Shared meaning, I guess. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the audience uh, listening to that a little bit uh, for us catching up. Um, hey, Rob, um, so so tell us a little bit about your art. You have a very unique style of art, and uh, would love to have you kind of talk about um, your art, your uh, uh, your your process of of what you do as an artist. Sure. Um, <clears throat> a little background as to the the trial that sent me in the direction that I have gone uh, is being colorblind. So because of the colorblindness, my, uh, my text, my techniques are different than, I mean, they're unique. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's another colorblind artist somewhere that does it. But as far as I know, um, just, it's just me and my apprentices uh, use the technique with paint horizontally. So the the canvas, uh, like I've got a, a three by six foot uh, canvas on my palette now, but my, not my palette, on my easel now, but my easel is horizontal. So <clears throat> the, the canvas sets on a lazy Susan with, that allows me to, to rotate the canvas because I, I squirt the paint on with caulking tubes. The caulking tubes are 10 ounce, uh, have 10 ounces of pigment in them. And, and because of the color blindness, that's, that's what led to this style of painting. Because when I squirt the paint out in my mind, I have to formulate, I have to, <clears throat> keep track and try to visualize what colors I'm going to be getting as a result of how much of the paint I squirt out and where it is squirt out. And then I, I mix it then with, with a palette knife because, <clears throat> because that's the only way I've found where I can get color that feels natural to me. 
I, I still don't know what color it is, but it feels it feels right. And it's right because there are chords of color instead of uh, when, when I work with a, a, a brush and work vertically, um, the, the paint turns into like a single note. Like if you're playing the piano, and you could play a song with one finger and it could be right. But how much richer is it when it's with chords on, mm-hmm. on the keyboard? Makes perfect sense. Same thing with color. Yeah, same thing with color. So the, the palette knife gives me chords of color, and then I use my design sense to get a simple foundation of darks and lights and dynamic shapes, and then the, the harmonious colors on the interior that are uh, beautiful chords of color yeah so that's kind of in a nutshell yeah fascinating what and, my, uh, and by, uh, by the way one thing that's also unique about rob is besides being colorblind you paint with both hands at the same time i taught one bowl and i broke my wrist as the word says oh, an art show coming up and all things work together for good so i switched my left hand was in a cast so i switched to my right hand and learned how to draw and paint and write with my right hand. And there were certain things about writing my right hand that were better than my left hand. Mm. And then I started working them together, and it uh, it was even more interesting. So um, that's the story on that. Um, work, working with both hands at, at the same time. And then with my apprentice, I just throw my tools down like I work with two knives at once when they get dirty I need to switch colors I just throw them down and pick up clean ones my apprentice uh, keeps track of my colors and the mixed colors he'll place where I know what hue they are on the palette and it's kind of a, a teamwork thing that's great that's great Hey, uh, Rob, uh, so, so tell us about the kind of art you do. What, what type of, I know you paint a lot of different things, but what are you most known for and what l- kind of led you towards that kind of uh, artic- artistic expression? Um, again, it was uh, the, the colorblindness that actually led to it. And, and because of that, the Lord's blessed that because it's, it's a unique style because of that. Um, because of that trial in my life, but it, it is, um, it's related to impressionism. So it's, it's not abstract, but it, it is simplified. Um, and if you take, if you were to take an image into Photoshop and, um, a beautiful painting, say, of a, a, a grove of aspen trees against a, a mountain background. And if you were to take that into Photoshop and then zoom in to the image so that the pixels start showing, you would you would see what interests me because that's what I was talking about, chords of color. There's There are progressions of related colors everywhere in in every direction there's a there's change in variety in the in the uh horizontal axis the vertical axis also into the distance there in nature there's always change and always uh order so those two things led me to love those those uh those pixels of color and and then trying to get those uh, progressions of related colors that make things beautiful. Yeah, and and of all your art, uh, Rob, I, I think I love your your mountain and aspen scenes probably the most. I think that's what you're most well known for. Uh, but just a beautiful and, and I love the texture of of the art. And I even remember you one time t- teaching me the, the squint technique, that if you squint at his artwork, it actually comes alive a little bit more. And it's just really just beautiful, fascinating art that you do. 
That's amazing. How do we tie all this back to our faith background and um, how we bring this into service? Um, I know it's really easy for people to look at music and say, well, you know, we bring music into our, our, our um, services and, and things. Theater can even come in very easily into a worship service. But where do you see how art fits with faith and all of the efforts we use um, in trying to serve our God and to be part of this universe? Well, we're made in God's image, and um, so there's there's that creative element that sets us apart in in creation, and and there's two parts to that question. One is personally for for me, and then one is in how I apply that and try to try to share that. But for me. Um, uh, what I was just talking about is a perfect example is because I see the signature of God, like it talks in Romans one about that in creation, um, we, we can see even the, the, the qualities of God, uh, through his handiwork. And <clears throat> as I'm painting and, and studying outdoors and looking at light and, and looking at those progressions of color, I see the signature of God. I see the Trinity because think, think my, my greatest challenge and inspiration as an artist is, is to try to uh, combine the variety with an order or with unity and uh, all the variety that are in those pixels. And in as I mix the paint and as I and as I step the colors in a sky or in a mountain or in a foreground, as I step those colors from one to another, it, there's beauty in that. And there's and we are drawn to the variety um, of 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 color and the variety of shape and and every aspect and every element of art. There's there's so much variety, and that's we're drawn to that. But is one thing our nation could try to remember also that variety doesn't uh, variety alone is chaos. You have to have the unity. You have to have the order for that variety to then be beautiful. Like Jesus said, those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth that the variety with the unity. And that's what the Trinity is. Think about it. There, there's the community, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet they're one. There's variety with unity. There's that fellowship, but there's there's the the, the oneness also. So for me, um, that search uh, just confirms. I, I just see the hand of God and everywhere as as I'm searching out, and the and the Lord hides these treasures for us to to search out to incline our ears toward wisdom and, and just listen and seek out um, God's qualities and, and the, 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 uh, the, the beauty, the handiwork, the, just the amazing, well, he's worthy of our worship. As, as you seek those out, you, you realize that. Um, I could just go on and on about that. It makes me think of that um, very common symbol that everyone <clears throat> sees after a storm if there's a rainbow and, and the promise of that rainbow. But you're actually taking all of that color and all of that beauty and putting it together on canvas. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what I love is, uh, you know, to, to that you were talking about Romans, the, the, uh, the, the, the qualities of God, um, his characteristic you see all over creation. And so um, to, to be able to go to like a quiet stream and sense that refreshing of God, to see a mountain flower and, and just the beauty of God or a thunderstorm uh, there in the mountains and you, you sense that majesty of God um, that, that is all over creation. His fingerprints are everywhere. And then to be able to translate that um, through paint onto a canvas uh, to be able to share with others uh, is such an incredible uh, gift that you're able to bring, Rob. And, and that's, it, it it's so exciting because because <clears throat> all all I get to do is think about it all all I'm doing is trying to transpose 
something that is an actual uh, three-dimensional scene. I'm just taking it and putting it on a two-dimensional surface and transposing those shapes so that the viewer's eye can uh, decipher what those shapes mean and and then it it's an illusion it's it's uh it's something that then is able to uh take them somewhere they aren't or to enjoy a, a simple design and simple beautiful color uh without being there but but that's just two dimensional in in a sculpture then a sculpture then goes three dimensional say I can paint a figure, uh, I can draw a figure, but there's no color to it. I can paint a figure, and I add color to it, but it's still not the real thing. It's still two-dimensional. A, take, a sculptor takes two to makes it three-dimensional. He could paint that sculpture, uh, but it, it still doesn't have the internal organ and the things on the inside. And you could, you could just keep going, and you could... You could uh, uh, fabricate those organs and put them inside of that sculpture, but you still don't have life. So it's just we're, we we just get to taste of the Lord and see that the Lord is good and just taste of his amazing uh, handiwork. And and as an artist, I, it, I just scratch the surface and I try to just get a simple piece of of the beauty and the order and and try to then transpose that and put it down for someone else to enjoy. That's awesome. Now Rob, I know that um you also have um included your family in your art. Um you know, one of the things that you know God gives us various callings of life and for you to be a husband, to be a, a father. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your family and how they're involved in your art? Well, Rebecca and I have um, six children, and we had them quickly, like six and nine years. But they they grew up. So so I I spent a lot of time with with them out outside painting on location strapped to my back because Rebecca was at home trying to take care and uh, keep keep order in the house with, so say, this, with six kids I could imagine that takes a lot of time <laughs> with me a lot yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so so I had a backpack with a child on my back or on the four-wheeler headed out into the mountains and and that was a small token of my trying to help help Rebecca at least um, take off some of the the burden with me so they spent time the children spent a lot of time with me painting and going to shows art shows openings uh, on location paint out in in the studio and and so it makes sense that uh, that that they would be interested in and when they would ask, then then I would teach them. I'd teach them design principles as as it uh, just when the subject came came up and and they got to paint on their own and draw. Now it, uh, it turns out four out of the six have uh, that passion and that gift so four of them are artists in their own right and are pursuing um that direction in and they each have a different bent of course because there's the variety in but the the unity uh for them is um beauty and 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 design dynamic shapes and beautiful color so they are pursuing and also represented by um, a couple of galleries already. And Rebecca has always been supportive. She tried painting uh, one day for about 10 minutes. 
<laughs> and that was enough for her. But I know she has a deep that appreciation for, for your art, though. Yes, appreciation sometimes is yes. very valuable. And I'm sure it's an amazing thing for you as a parent to see that gift you've given your kids for them to have that appreciation and desire to pursue art as well. Even for the two who maybe didn't have as much of an interest, they certainly must appreciate what you've taught them. Definitely. And and they're they're gifted also in but just in different ways. In different areas. One is a uh, fourth grade teacher and, and one is a uh, uh, a counselor. He's got his masters in psychology and he's a counselor. So they're gifted in their own their own directions. Yep, yep, that's great. Hey, Rob, I'd like to uh, explore with you just a little bit about um, you living out your faith, your calling in Christ as an artist, um, more in the practical skills. Um, how do you see yourself living out your faith in Christ in your everyday calling that you have as an artist, um, both the opportunities it provides you and, and as well as perhaps some of the challenges it does as well? Uh, boy, that is... Uh a great question um and the the opportunities we'll start with that it, uh as as an artist it, it's seed time and harvest and I, I i spent a lot of years sowing the seed and, and trying to figure out uh, uh how color works being colorblind but but through those hard things i was also able to then break color down into an understandable uh, method. And because I had that, I could then communicate it. The Lord has also made me uh, a, a teacher, given me that that gift of being a teacher. So having the, the skills and then also the ability to teach has, has afforded me uh, so many opportunities to uh, to teach people and to and to try to help them to have their eyes open to to um, to creation and the and and God's handiwork and and the character of God in creation and and like the like I was talking about the the Trinity and in seeing different qualities in in by by just isolating the elements in art and then diving in and focusing on it just one little part of the like of a of a diamond one facet of of uh, of beauty and there's so many in and, and as a teacher then I also had people coming coming to me I didn't have to go uh seeking and an audience the the audience came to me the the apprentices came to me asking asking for time and asking for uh for insight and direction and and I'm able to uh God's given me the the ability to to identify what what the elements are and, and and to isolate those and to focus on them and then try to give specific uh, steps for the student then to achieve the, the end goal to, toward understanding that specific element to, by isolating it and getting rid of the other elements and and uh, giving directed assignments and and helping them to see that so so apprentices then would come and I've had several uh, that will be with me for um, like two to five years um, over the last few decades. I've, I've had several, and 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 they um, they they then are they're with me, and and they see they see how um, the Lord works through me, and and as I as I deal with people and I deal with galleries 
and I deal with the business uh, uh, in the spirit when I am in the <laughs> spirit, uh, which is my direction. And and I then uh, they they can see the that that where the spirit of God is, and what those who follow the spirit of God who walk in the spirit are light and salt. They're drawn to that, and and then they begin. Uh, it hopefully in, encourages them and and uh, gives them the incentive, inspiration to to walk in the spirit also, and and to see that uh, um, our our purpose in life uh, is not just to get an income. The dollar bill is not our God, and uh, yet it's it's just a tool. So it sounds and like life is a vapor. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you've not just been able to invest in a new generation of artists, but but to be able to disciple people along the way of living life together, living out this common vocation together, uh, as you invest in them both artistically, but at, you know, in the kingdom as well. Yes. Yes, definitely. And, 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 and I, I, uh, this, oh, I, I was just saying to to remember as as I as I age, uh, seeing that life is a vapor. You, you know, there it wasn't. It seemed like yesterday you and I were climbing those mountain peaks. Now I'm mainly just photograph them you know it's in <laughs> life is is brief yes and Goes and fast. we uh, so so the, the my my goal then isn't isn't to make a name for myself my kingdom but i'm uh if if i can just sow if i can just sow the seeds in my children in my students is for the future because there will be a day when the Lord takes me home and and nothing's going to matter. All these paintings, uh, you know, they're going to burn. It, they, But they are a tool. And the seeds that I'm able to sow then can can be eternal. They can, they can uh, be light and salt to the people that I'm around. Yeah. And Rob, you have a unique studio too. I've been there. Uh, tell us a little bit about this building that you're in and, and also you utilize it for ministry purposes as well, don't you? Yes. Um, it is an old bean warehouse. So it started out dark and dirty. It, it's got, uh, I don't know, 30 foot, uh, ceiling, 20, 26 to 30 foot ceilings and Punched in north light is 10,000 10, square feet in just one of the buildings. There's three different buildings. So it, I couldn't ask for anything better as far as the studio. And uh, it's two blocks away from where our children went to school. So that worked great. And there's, there's an area that uh, we have a, a piano. We have... You got a basketball uh, hoop, drum don't you? Set, guitars. Yeah, we got a hoop, uh, weights, an area for lifting weights, and and people come, people come, and uh, we had Christian Ed up in one of the galleries where people would, uh, the high school students would come here when Dave Mensing was an uh, an apprentice, and he was taught Christian ed for years and it was a, a wonderful thing and and when I have a chance I, I have uh, the Boy Scouts come in uh, uh, the grade schools come over the, I have the Mormon Church has a lot of uh, different groups that that they'll bring over and I'm, I'm just able to speak freely here because it's, uh, it's my space and, and, uh, I just pray for the Lord to, uh, use it and sow seeds to the kingdom. 
That's great. That's great. Hey, Rob, uh, also, I'd like to hear just maybe about some of the challenges. Uh, being uh, a Christian who's living your life as an artist, what, what are some of the challenges that you've faced in living out your calling, your vocation? Um, probably one of the hardest things has been with, um, I, I don't have a schedule to speak of. And I used that, well, the easiest way to describe when I was, uh, when I was on the farm growing up on the farm, a lot of your scheduling depended on the weather. You know whether what time you had to get up to to uh, bale the hay uh, depended on how much dew there was or or whether you went out if the wind was blowing you had to rake the beans or just if it rained it changed things so everything was just it was fluid and and that uh, that was got it it's part of me and then. Um, so I have, I'm not very good at, um, creating order (laughs) and it's been very difficult. It's been a challenge for my, my wife who was, she was from, uh, the Bay area in California. It was like one freight train coming from San Francisco and one coming from Hazleton, Idaho. And, and that was, that was a challenge. Because opposites probably the attract. Greatest challenge. Uh, <laughs> Is it, you know what? I think God knew who you needed in your yeah. life there, Rob. <laughs> oh, boy. Then I'm thankful. So thankful. That's great. And hey, um, Go ahead, please. Well, I was just, there are other challenges are the, the business end of it. Um, now, um, the finances aren't aren't the challenge that it used to be but um and and i'm thankful for that but that used to be a challenge there was uh, some lean years a lot of lean years um and dealing dealing with the the galleries that's uh that's a challenge just to to keep um to keep my focus on uh off of anything else but you know having the the lord superintend over all of those areas that's great that's great um rob you know we may have some people who are listening and viewing this podcast and they may be young people who have a love and passion for art um and they're also christians and they're wondering how, how do they intersect what's this mean for my future um, what advice would you give to young people who are maybe considering going into the calling, the vocation of, of being an artist, and, and, and especially any advice you could give them about living their faith through that as well? Um, boy, I, I guess the main thing would be to keep the main thing the main thing. As, as you have a passion, if you have a passion and you've got uh, even uh, minor gifting toward art, if you have the passion, you can develop that and you can produce um, a, a living. So, so the first thing I'd say is if, if, you, if that's something you, you feel uh, passionate about and you feel you're called toward, to it, don't let anything stop you. Don't let um, a uh, don't let a broken wrist stop you. Don't let color blindness stop you. Mm-hmm. Don't let other people stop you. Um, just just uh, don't be weary in well doing. For in due season you will have a harvest. It's just like in everything else. So so keep keep going. And and don't give up, but also don't let your focus be distracted. You're going to um, in in art. There's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of atheism. There's a lot of 
atheistic evolution and and that is it's it's one thing you have to remember is that um people people will look down upon you and they'll think that they are uh, superior because they believe in science <laughs> but that is that's please remember that's not just that is not true that that you cannot remove a creator you cannot remove god from the equation and come out with the right answer when you're looking at science and ev evolution that theory that they remove a creative god that can speak a universe into existence from nothing and in one day can create a world that is already processed, that already has been in the process. Like if you, on, on day two, whenever the trees were made, if you cut a tree down, you would see rings in it. Um, a creative God created things already processed. So that's going to be a huge thing for, for an artist to remember and then let, let those, let creation and nature, uh, uh, confirm that, that truth in you, that God's word is true and, and, and don't be moved from that. Hang on to that, and then as you as you walk in the spirit and you hear the voice of your shepherd, uh, that you'll grow in that relationship, and then uh, nothing will be able to move you. That's awesome. Thank you for for that, Rob. Um, you know, one of the things, Rob. You know, as we wrap up this podcast, that that I really appreciate um, you living out your faith as an artist. Um, and you, you really kind of just uh, touched on this, um, the idea that we have a creative God who um, not only created the, the, the world and the universe and all that we see, but he, he has this ongoing work of creation that he does. Um, and he does that often through our vocations, our callings. And to be able to see you, that, that creative mm -hmm. art that you do, um, expressing and living the image of God, um, who is a creator God. Um, it's just really wonderful to see. And uh, I know for my life personally, I know for others, um, we have been very blessed uh, by your art and how you express your faith through that. And so we want to thank you. Hey, Rob, if any of our viewing or listening audience wants to get in touch with you, find out more about your art, um, how do they do that? Um, the simplest way, just uh, Google Robert Moore artist and then uh, there will be several several things that come up and go go to my website or go to any of the um, I'm in a maybe 10 different dozen different galleries so just google Robert Moore artist and and there will be uh, a lot of things that will come up that's great. Well, Rob, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and as we wrap up this uh, podcast, uh, Trish, thank you for being in the studio, joining us as well. And uh, to all of our uh, listening and viewing audience, thank you so much for joining this Call to Be podcast, this this conversation on uh, how to be an everyday believer and what it means to, to live out your calling, to, to make a, an impact as you live out your faith in your daily uh, callings of life. Um, Make sure that uh, to listen and to view these podcasts, we, we're on street, different streaming services, uh, audio, as well as we're on YouTube. Make sure to check those out. Uh, also, make sure that you go to our social media pages, uh, both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, just simply put in uh, Call to Be Podcast uh, and make sure to like and share. If you really have found this to be a blessing to you, uh, make sure you share that blessing with others. Uh, we also want to thank our sponsors, uh, both Malam and the Southeastern District for their generous support in making this podcast possible. And just to let you all know, we've got an exciting podcast coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking about that it's all about relationships to really look at the relational nature of our callings and our vocations in life. And so we want to make sure that uh, uh, to have you check that out. Well, with that, Trish, Rob, thank you for both being here. 
we want to wish our listening and viewing audience God's richest blessings, and we'll catch you next time for our Call to Be podcast. Take care, everybody.